Hey, welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. When it actually comes to operating system updates, Windows 10 is definitely not my preferred choice. I really feel that it's too frequent. It can often be complex. And most importantly, it interrupts my operating system experience. Now, when it comes to updates on Apple's Mac OS, I definitely feel that it's better than it is here in Microsoft Windows. However, they are not my preferred choice. My preferred choice is obviously through Linux, specifically here through Linux Mint. I really feel that the system update process through Linux Mint is so much easier and you actually have more control over which updates you put in and most importantly when you want to update them. But as with anything complex like operating systems, things are not perfect and updates can definitely break your system. Now for the most part uh, in Linux, most of your updates are not going to cause problems. But the one type of update that usually is the problem whenever you do have breaks is kernel updates. And so today I'm going to be showing you how you could help prevent that. And at the same time, you could also recover if you accidentally have an update that breaks your system. Because I actually did run into that when I had a kernel update and it actually broke the Wi-Fi on my laptop, which is definitely a bad thing. And so what you would do here is you go up here to edit preferences. And if you notice here under updates, everything is checked. And so the only one that I would uncheck is this, always select kernel updates. Because I really feel it is important for you to know that when there is brand new kernel updates available. Secondly is the levels. For me, I just choose level one and two because level three and four is either has not been fully tested yet or maybe it's not stable yet. And so I would just leave those unchecked. This is just the auto refresh of your updates. And there's also a blacklist option as well in case you want to blacklist certain updates. And finally, there is an auto upgrade option. And I don't recommend this. I don't like updates being installed automatically unless I want them to be installed. And so once you've chosen that, go ahead and click on apply. Your updates will refresh. And if you notice right here, my Linux kernel is no longer selected. And within Linux Mint, things are, I think, a lot more simplified. So for example, if you put your mouse over to type, it tells you the type of updates these are. See here with the Thunderbolt kernel and then here are software updates. And then right here, this is for Chrome. This is a third party update. Very easy to understand. So what if you accidentally put in a kernel update and now your operating system breaks? Well, the easiest way to recover is using snapshots. And if you go up here to edit system snapshots, it'll open up a program called TimeShift, which is automatically installed in Linux Mint 19. And so you could actually get there by going to your menu, going to administration, and there is TimeShift. And this is super easy to set up. Now I've already remove my previous snapshots but I'm going to show you how to set this up. You would go to settings. I would just leave it at rsync. Location allows you to choose where you want to save your snapshots because they will take up space. I have two hard drives on my laptop so I'm going to put on the one with more space. And then you could choose a schedule. Monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, or at boot. I prefer to do it weekly and you could choose how many snapshots you want to keep. But just realize that it does take up space. Like for me, in order to make a snapshot, it takes up around 13 gigs each snapshot. So I'll leave that up to you and how much space that you have. And then here, you could also back up your entire home directory and root directory. Now, these are excluded by default because this is going to take up a lot of space, especially your home directory. So I would recommend you exclude that unless you have the space in order to make snapshots of these. And there's also filters as well. But once you get that scheduled, it pretty much runs in the background. So it doesn't, you know, interrupt your operating system usage. And then it'll show all your available snapshots. You could also delete snapshots if you want or view the rsync log file. And then this is the most important thing. Once you have snapshots built, you could restore them. And that's why it's so important for you to use this time shift snapshot feature. Because, you know, if you do have system breaks, Definitely would be horrible if you couldn't recover or if you had to reinstall everything. So I highly recommend that you use this program along with all the other options that I set. And so that is how uh, I would actually make sure that your system is uh, safe <laughs> in terms of updates. It's not 100%, uh, but I think it's a lot better than just leaving it the way it is by default. And so if you had any thoughts on this, whether you are brand new to Linux or maybe you are a longtime veteran of Linux, 
be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you'll get access to 30 videos plus additional content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.